Hello again and welcome to Money Matters. Hong Kong lags behind other major cities in the rebound of its aviation and travel sectors. The recent cancellation of mandatory hotel quarantine for arrivals to the SAR has been a boost to the industries. But Zella Chin reports on obstacles that slow down the recovery. Long queues at the airport on a Tuesday evening. These passengers can't wait to jet off to Frankfurt. They're just so eager to travel again. Um, they're so much looking forward to reconnect with their loved ones, uh, people, friends, business partners they haven't seen for more than two years. Seeing like the airport having more passengers, more people, more lively situation. And as an airliner, um, yeah, that's a, that's a great feeling. The general manager of Lutanza Group for Hong Kong, South China and Macau says the group had decided to increase the number of flights in July with the expectation that Hong Kong would relax border restrictions. Obviously the reduction of hotel quarantine to 3 plus 4 and then 0 plus 3 and we see it was the right decision uh, to reconnect Hong Kong with our home markets, Germany, Switzerland. Um, so we're really happy about that. The group flies five times a week to Zurich and daily to Frankfurt for a total of 12 nonstop flights a week to Europe. But that's 37% fewer flights than before the pandemic. So what would it take for airlines to add more flights again? For airline, it's very important two elements. On one side, that passenger can travel freely, uh, that they will to travel again. And on the other side, that crews um, can fly in, fly out um, in a very convenient, uh, very stable way. Non-locally based aircrew are required to self-isolate upon arrival. They go directly to the hotel and stay until their departure. Christoph says recently the crew are allowed to use the new 0 plus 3 scheme, which means a new hotel quarantine, three days of no high-risk activities such as entering restaurants, and seven days of RAT and PCR tests. Our head offices need to plan uh, what the impact will be in case of a positive test of pilot on arrival. Um, can the crew still operate the aircraft out of Hong Kong? Worst case is we need to cancel flights um, because of lack of crew um, due to the positive test of crew members. Christoph says Hong Kong's layover restrictions for the non-local flight crew are a major obstacle which prevents the group from adding more flights to the SAR. In September, the airport handled less than 11,700 flights, a 65% decrease from September 2019. Hong Kong has lost its position as a global hub and will struggle to regain it. The director general of the airline's lobby group, IATA, recently said Hong Kong is no longer an aviation hub due to China's zero COVID policy. Andrew Yun is a director of policy research at Chinese University's Aviation Policy and Research Center. He says an aviation hub requires connectivity and frequency of flights. Hong Kong used to have about 100 airlines flying to and from the city, but now it's less than 50 because of the lack of passenger demand. In the past, we have a lot of mainland passengers. Uh, they will come to Hong Kong uh, by air or by other mode of transportation and then fly to other places. But now, uh, given the um, relatively strict uh, quarantine policy in mainland China, so uh, this demand is kind a lot. Given the quarantine uh, policy in Hong Kong, uh, not many overseas passengers are willing to fly to Hong Kong. In September, the airport had 525,000 passengers pass through, compared with 4.9 million passengers in September 2019. That's a 90% drop. Andrew says overseas passengers are flying to other aviation hubs to transit. Now we have many choices, say uh, uh, Singapore, and also uh, Incheon Airport, uh, even uh, Bangkok Airport, and then uh, further far away to the European market, we also have Dubai. So uh, during the pandemic, uh, Hong Kong, we don't have a lot of uh, operations, and then uh, most of airlines just change to the uh, transit hub to other places. With the cancellation of compulsory quarantine for arrivals to the city in late September, there's been a surge in demand for air travel. But stumbling blocks have emerged as the aviation sector increases operations. About 25% of the employers at this job fair are aviation-related companies. This one is looking to hire about 1,000 more security officers to get ready for the post-pandemic traffic. 
But the pandemic, uh, the airlines, uh, in order to uh, to have the, some cost saving measures, so uh, they uh, lay off some people, and then when they need to hire them back, then it's also face the difficulties. Uh, in Hong Kong, we have very low unemployment rate, so um, the workers in Hong Kong actually have a lot of uh, uh, different opportunities. He says the biggest staff shortage is among the pilots. The major issue for Hong Kong is we actually uh, left behind for other countries. Uh, say they have already uh, started the recovery uh, last year, so they started to hire the pilot. So many pilots in Hong Kong actually already relocate to uh, other countries. And then uh, when the airlines in Hong Kong want to hire the pilot, then uh, they face the difficulties. So now uh, they may need to think whether they hire local people and then uh, provide some training, but it, it takes time. Cathay Pacific plans to hire 4,000 frontline employees, and it will restart a training program to produce more than 1,000 cadet pilots by 2025. This travel agency's business rebounded with the easing of border restrictions. The agency's resumed tours to Japan at the end of June after a two-year hiatus. They were very excited. Uh, some of them um, like even travel alone. Not yeah, without any companion, because they liked um, Japan like um, so much. They've been like longing for it and they're very hungry for it, like going back again. Tours to Japan generally make up 70% of the agency's revenues. CN had 80 tour groups visit Japan in October, with 10 to 20 customers each. 80 tours is not a lot uh, compared to before. We usually do around 150 to 200 tours um, per um, per uh, month. And with you know, around 20 or above um, customer in each tour. He expects business by year end will reach 50% of pre pandemic sales. The cost of the, of the uh, traveling, not only tour, but also like um, air tickets and also uh, accommodation, they have increased their um, accommodation cost, price, um, on average 30 to 4% this year already. And also um, for the air tickets, like at least um, 50 to 100 percent increment is it's like a new norm. Even though you may want to go, but you may not have the budget to go. I feel like it's a struggle between mainland China policies. Prudence Lai is a research analyst. She says the easing of border restrictions may be too little too late for some travel agencies. We do see in the past few years, over 100 um, travel agencies actually um, went out of business, which is around 8 to 9 percent of the total number in our market. Industry experts actually expect another 10 percent to go out of business uh, going forward because of the softness and slowness in recovery in the um, tourism in market. Big agencies like Hong Tai and Morningstar folded earlier this year. In this industry as a whole, it's not easy. It's definitely not easy, given that we have like suffered like for like um, two and a half years, right? We're all of us are burning cash, um, no matter the amount, right? And then once we resume from June, we need extra cash to restart because of like uh, hiring more people, um, promoting more paying more deposit to secure our, our seats from airlines. Prudence says Hong Kong's inbound visitor arrivals is not recovering as fast as outbound departures. Hong Kong's attractiveness as a destination uh, is slightly weaker due to our currently still in place COVID related measures such as mask wearing, uh, mandatory mask wearing requirements uh, and visitors having the need to do rat test and uh, regular PCR tests upon entry. So compared to our markets in the neighborhood such as Singapore, Thailand, uh, they've all actually reopened uh, their borders already with limited COVID related measures. Starting in November, inbound tour groups will be allowed to visit attractions and dine in designated restaurants as soon as they arrive in the city. Prudence thinks loosening restrictions for tour groups would help the recovery of the aviation and travel sectors. She expects a rebound to pre-pandemic levels by 2026, but that's contingent on the Hong Kong mainland border reopening. China, as a major source of our market, uh, historically 65% of our inbound arrivals, we really uh, need to see a reopening between China and Hong Kong borders or um, recovery in flows between Hong Kong and mainland China in order to see a full recovery to pre-COVID levels.
The slump in Hong Kong's property market is accelerating as borrowing costs rise. The centerline gauge of secondary home prices fell 2% in the week ending October 30th, the most since March 2016. The drop took the index to its lowest level since December 2017. Hong Kong property was among the biggest beneficiaries of low global interest rates. The centerline gauge has surged more than 500% from its 2003 low. That's now starting to reverse as borrowing costs jump, the economy shrinks, and an exodus of residents adds to selling pressure. The secondary home price index has fallen 14% from its 2021 peak. New home sales may reach just 50% of annual completions this year, the lowest proportion in more than two decades. Developers may be forced to offer steeper discounts in order to sell vacant units, as the number of unsold new homes reaches a 15-year high. Investment bank Goldman Sachs says it expects Hong Kong residential property values to drop by a third through 2023. Up next, how expats working in the Greater Bay Area have adapted to the working culture of local companies. Stay with us. Welcome back to Money Matters. There is great demand for talented foreign expats in the Greater Bay Area. Companies want their help to develop new businesses. But Western expats find they have to adapt to the strict office hierarchy in local companies. We take a look at how some expats have coped and at the jobs available in the GBA. I'm a game designer in uh, Guangzhou. I've worked with character design, like uh, coming up with characters, their backstory, how they speak, how they move. But working with the art team and the, the animation team and the uh, sounds team to make sure they, uh, they can bring my characters to life. Kyle came here from the UK. He did a degree in 3D video game art at university. He graduated a few years ago during a digital video game boom in China. He decided to go to Guangzhou and look for a job. He's been working at a video game development company for three years. It has this sort of American dream type thing, where American dream back in the was it 1920s or 1800s, where you would go to America to find a job because it was an emerging market. It was a new country almost. China has a similar thing, where you have these big companies, these big tech companies, um, that are looking for outside foreign talent. And you can come here and get a job straight out of university in something that you're really, really skilled in. In recent years, the video game industry was badly affected by Beijing's regulatory crackdown. So video game companies opted to make products for overseas markets, creating plenty of job opportunities for foreigners. But the problem is with the, the freeze on game releases in China, in mainland China, there is a problem with trying to publish games here. So Western developers can't really publish here anymore, and even Chinese developers can't publish here anymore. So while the market is there, the possibility is not there. So a lot of the companies are looking to develop games for the, uh, outside, for the rest of the world. This is the newspaper. How to say that? Kyle's been living in Guangzhou and has a Chinese girlfriend. He learned Putonghua using a chat translation tool allowing him to talk with local colleagues. But he's had difficulty adapting to the office culture in the company. For example, expected unpaid overtime is something that nobody bats an eyelid. Everyone just does it, you know. It's uh, 6 o'clock or 6.30, whatever time you finish work, that the top clicks over, that's like the clock ticks over, uh, and people just carry on working like there was nothing, like, it, like it's nothing. There's sometimes information be quite difficult to get. That's not necessarily because I'm not fluent in the, the language. Sometimes my coworkers also don't get the information. You could be working on something for one week, and at the end of the week, you'd be like, oh, oh we canceled that last week. And you, you would be like, oh, well, I've just wasted a week's worth of work. Salary-wise, the pay is not as high as in Britain, but Kyle prefers to stay in Guangzhou because of the lower living costs and convenience. 
Even during COVID, he's stuck around the city seeking more opportunities. This area, I mean, there's Alibaba here and around the corner is Xiaomi. But this whole area is quite new. It's like a new Silicon Valley. I think Guangzhou's a pretty good place. Uh, before it used to be Shenzhen uh, or specifically Beijing and Shanghai, but I now, I think Guangzhou has opened up quite a lot with the way more op job opportunities, way more construction buildings being finished, way more uh, op job opportunities. I think it's, it's definitely up there with one of the top cities to, to come work, yeah. Uh, for game designers, for specifically, there's quite a few game companies here and possibly more game companies soon too. Foreigners who want to work in China must first obtain a work permit. There are three types of work permits in China. A Type A work permit applies to highly qualified top talent. Type B applies to professional talent in line with labor market demand. Candidates with a bachelor's degree and more than two years work experience. The Type C permit is for fresh graduates and is subject to quotas. Professor Xu Guobin, the chairman of the Guangdong Academy of Human Resources, believes more preferential policies will be rolled out to attract more foreign talent. There will be three aspects. One is to expand the development plan in Nansha, Hanqing and Shanghai in Shenzhen. The mainland authorities will launch a talent scheme to attract foreigners, Hong Kong and Macau residents to work in these cities. The second aspect is to set up service centers for expats in Nansha and other cities. The services centers will offer help and consultation for expatriates in all aspects in the community. The third area is to step up integration of Guangzhou, Shenzhen and Zhuhai with other GBA cities to push development forward. During COVID, Guangzhou launched new measures to speed up the work permit process for foreign workers. Permit applications were moved online without face-to-face -face examination and approval. The process only takes five working days. Upon approval, Type A applicants can pick up a work permit card directly without submitting any paper documents. Type B and C applicants need to submit the required documents and pick up permit cards after the documents are verified. Foreigners who have obtained work permits from other GBA cities do not need to provide proof of work experience and education degree certificates when applying for a work permit in Guangzhou. Foreign science and technology talent who participate in national, provincial and municipal science and technology projects with a doctorate degree in science, engineering, agriculture or medicine can apply for a 10-year visa. Even as the GBA offers opportunities for expats, it may take some time for foreigners, like Brandy, to identify themselves as a GBA resident. Sometimes I feel like I have two identities. One is an American woman approaching 40 years old. I've been in China for 16 years. I film a 16-year-old Chinese girl. When I am with my Chinese friends, they still think I'm very American. They say, now you have become a Chinese. No, actually now I'm able to express an American ideology. Why do I come here often? Because they don't treat me as a foreigner. They like to play with brandy. So I come here. Brandy says some foreigners have negative feelings about China and refuse to work in the country. But she believes life will be happier if you don't judge and be more open. I find the people who aren't very happy or can't stay here for a long time is because they're always comparing. Well, in my country, it's like, no, in your country is your country. This is, this is now, this is not old, like China 10 years ago, 20 years ago. This is now just, uh, oh, I know, uh, like live in the moment and you'll be much happier anywhere you go. If you really want to enjoy Guangzhou, 
You got to go out. You got to meet the people. You got to you got to you got to get to know something before you don't like it. You know, I see a lot of people. They just judge it before they really even understand it. So do your best to understand something before you make a judgment, and you'll be happy. You'll be happy here. It's easy. The slow return of sport in Hong Kong continued with the Action Asia Hong Kong 50 Extreme Marathon. The Hong Kong 50 race is the latest sporting event that was given government clearance to be held in a sign that Hong Kong continues to try and move on from many of the strict COVID policies adopted and still used on mainland China. But the field of close to 500 runners were still required to wear face masks at the start, perform PCR tests within 48 hours, do a morning rapid test, and make sure they were cleared up by an app used by the Hong Kong government to track residents' COVID status. The race took the main field 50 kilometers up, down, and around some of the most difficult and challenging trails on Hong Kong Island. Dutchman Ludwig Vrenz won the men's race in four hours, 47 minutes, and 21 seconds. Oh, today's race was really, really cool, really phenomenal. Uh, it's a really tough course, but I had a lot of fun. The organizers are great, really good spirit out there, and uh, really good competition. Local extreme runner Karen Jung Man Yi cruised to victory in the women's main event in five hours, 30 minutes, and 38 seconds. The second race of the four race Hong Kong 50 series will be on December 10th on Lantau Island. That's the show. Thanks for watching. Next time on Money Matters, how the government is hoping to make Hong Kong an international crypto hub. See you then. Bye for now.